everyone hi welcome to the channel wall street mojo today we have a topic with us is called residual risk uh, watch the video till the end and also if you are new to this channel then you can subscribe us by clicking the bell icon so what is residual risk okay there's a dialog box here it says something let's try and understand this first residual risk is the amount of the risk that remains in the process after all all the risk have been calculated and accounted in head residual risk is basically you have tried and cover up as much as possible you have you have tried and hedged as much as possible covered up mitigated risk to the extent that is the uh, the risk coverance possibility but beyond that whatever risk remains that is the residual risk okay we'll get to the nitty gritty of this but first we'll try and understand what is the residual But first we will understand what is the residual risk. A couple of minutes back we just understood what is residual residual risk. That is the risk that remains the process after all the risk have been calculated, accounted and hedged. So during an investment of the business process, there are a lot of risk that is involved and in the entity that takes into consideration all such risks. So it counter factors, uh, you can say that or eliminates all the known risks of the process. So the risk, risk that remains in the process may be due to unknown uh, factors uh, which cannot be hedged or countered. So such risks are called the residual risks. So simply put, the danger to the business that remains after all identified risk have been eliminated or mitigated through a company's efforts or probably some internal risk control well let's understand the formula that's the second portion the formula to calculate the residual risk the residual risk is equal to that is the r is equal to the inherent risk that is the you can say rr is equal to inherent risk minus the impact of risk controls now what is inherent risk here See, this is the amount of the risk that exists in the absence of the control or other mitigating factors are not in place. So it is also known as the risk before the control or the gross risk. Now, the impact of risk controls. Now, what is this impact of risk control? So this is the amount of the risk that is eliminated. It is mitigated or hedged by taking the internal or the external risk control. So thus, when the impact of the risk control is subtracted from the inherent risk, the residual amount that remains is the is, is this risk. So let us look at residual risk example so that we can find out what the residual risk could be for the organization in terms of the potential loss and consider, you know, the firm which has recently taken up the new project. So without any risk control, the firm could, could lose uh, around, let's say, 500 million. So however, you know, the firm prepares and follows the risk governance guidelines and takes necessary steps calculated the residual risk and it tries to mitigate some of the known risk but after taking the internal control the firm has calculated the impact of the risk control as closely around let's say 400 million so this impact can be said that as the amount of the risk loss reducing by taking the control measure so it is reduced to from 500 to 400 now the inherent risk is 500 this is your inherent risk and the impact of the risk control the impact of the risk control is the is 400 thus the residual risk that remains is 500 minus 400 that is 100 million so the residual risk examples as a residual risk example you know i'll take i'll try and evaluate this See, uh, you can consider the the car seat belt as a very vague example. I mean, seat belts initially without the seat belts, there were a lot of deaths and injuries due to the accidents. But after the seat belts were installed in the car and made mandatory to wear by the law, there was a significant reduction in deaths and injuries. However, still there are injuries and deaths by accidents even after the driver wears the seat belts so this could be said that as a residual risk so the seat belt over here have been successful in meeting mitigating the risk but some risk is still left which is not captured that is why there is a death by accidents fourth 
how the companies try to mitigate risk how they are going to mitigate this okay the company deals with risk in four ways while the company tries to mitigate risk by any other ways there are some amount of this uh, amount of this risk generated and this four ways are described as first either you avoid the risk see companies may decide to not take on the project or the investment to avoid the inherent risk in the project so a company may decide to not take to not take a project or to develop a technology but because of the new risk that company may be exposed to however in avoiding such risk the company may be exposed to risk of the competitor firm developing such a technology so the company may lose its clients and business and may be posed to the threat of being less competitive after the competitor firms develops new technology thus avoiding some risk may expose the company to different residual risk second is the risk reduction process see company performs a lot of checks and balances uh, in, in 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 reducing a risk however such risk reduction practice may expose the company to to residual risk in the process itself consider a production and manufacturing of a cup which has their list of procedures to be performed in the manufacturing which checks the risk involved at each stage of process however the human or the manual error exposes the company to such risk which may not be mitigated easily so avoid the risk risk reduction you can transfer the risk next is risk transfer see so see most of the companies and individuals buy insurance okay the insurance plans from the insurance company to transfer any kind of risk to the third party so while buying an insurance plan is the basic tool to mitigate all type of risk but it too has some amount of residual risk now suppose let's say a company buys an insurance scheme for fire related disaster however the insurance company refuses to pay damages or probably the insurance company goes bankrupt due to high numbers of claims for the other reasons so the risk transfer did not work as it was expected while buying the insurance plan fourth is you accept the risk that is risk acceptance see after taking all the necessary steps as mentioned about the investor may be bound to accept the certain amount of risk and this is called risk acceptance where the investor may neither be able to identify the risk nor can mitigate or transfer the risk but will have to accept it also he will have to pay or incur some you know losses if the risk materializes into losses and such a risk acceptance is generally in the case of residual risk or we can say that you know risk which is accepted by the investors after taking all necessary steps into residual risk now i'll take you down to the steps to counter this kind of residual risk first you can identify and mitigate all the known risk identify and uh, uh, you know mitigate that is cover up all the known risk that is available to you then follow the risk framework framework okay to avoid any loss or damages then you identify the governance risk compliance requirement you know and 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 formulate policies for the same then you do uh, strengthen or and and weakness part you know weakness of the risk framework and try to enhance it now define you know organization's risk appetite is the next part its capacity to take risk and resilience to losses in case of an event the next is you know you can take necessary action to offset uh, the unacceptable uh, you know unacceptable the, the risk and the next is you can buy insurance against the losses to transfer the risk and lastly the organization should accept the risk as it is and maintain the resource buffer so residual risk are the leftover risk that remains after all the unknown risk that have been factored in and counted or mitigated and they can also be thought of as a risk that remains after a planned risk framework and relevant risk controls are put in place and you subtract the impact of the risk control from the inherent risk in the business we here Uh, that is without any risk control is issued 
you calculate the residual risk. So this kind of risk can be formally be avoided by transferring it to the third party insurance company. And in cases where no insurance is taken against such risk, the company usually accepts it as a risk to the business and it creates contingency reserves to main manage this risk. And thus, company either transfers, I'll say company can either transfers or accepts the residual risk as a part of the main business. So that's it uh, for this particular topic. If you have learned and enjoyed watching this video, please like and comment on this video and subscribe to our channel for the latest updates. Thank you everyone. Cheers.